Hey YouTube, Darren here. I'm gonna give you kind of an update as to what all's going on. How about this Saturday afternoon, guys? It was 58 degrees here last night. It's gonna be around high 80s today. This is Alabama football weather. Um, I don't watch much football. This is a good day to watch football, though. but I did want to give a shout out to a bunch of people that have subscribed to my channel. Let's get over here and we'll take a look at them. Adam Eichmann, thank you for subscribing, sir. Saul Aguilar, thank you. Joey Marinen, M-E-R-I-N-E-N. And this one, TH4W1ZZ4RD, and I believe that is the wizard. That cool black guy too. Yes, you are. Thank you for subscribing, sir. Hog hunting dirt biker. Thank you for subscribing. Mac 9902. Thanks, man. As always, guys, take a look at Southern Off Road Mowers on Facebook. More to come. Now we're back. Uh, this is going to be a video uh, for forbidden mowers. Uh, he asked me a while back uh, about the older one-piece carburetors uh, like that uh, go on those uh, flathead bricks. And I had to scrounge around. I do have one, and I'm in the process of cleaning it right now. I got it in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner, and so it's bubbling away and heating up. We're going to clean it up, and we're just going to go through a... Uh, uh, pull apart and uh, put back together. He asked me how, what was a good way to clean them. I believe it was. And so we're going to do that. Going to be a quick video. These I don't run across very many of these anymore. I've got maybe one or two uh, that I just keep around and uh, spray down in Ziploc bags. We'll take a look at it. Okay, guys, now we're back. Got it cleaned out and got everything separated. And I wanted to show you where I'm getting this information from. This is uh, operating and maintenance instructions from Briggs & Stratton for these model numbers. But it had these one-piece carburetors on them. These were the flatheads that came with them. And this is what we are dealing with here. And get it to where you can kind of see that is a schematic of it. And that is going to be your high speed adjustment. And right there is going to be your low speed adjustment. And then we're going to go through all of this. It talks also about the recommended adjustments for these. Tighten it slightly to close. Tighten it down. Don't over tighten it where it's completely closed and then you're going to back off one and a half turns to cold start and then you can fine tune adjust it from that so that is what you're going to do it uh, set it on this is what Briggs and Stratton at the time recommended for these older flathead uh, one piece carburetors so you would tighten it down back off one and a half turns there and there so okay, guys. now we're also going to pull this some of this information off of a Briggs and Stratton repair manual uh, that I've gotten uh, these are for the one speed carburetors as well um, these were called I think Walbro W-A-L-B-R-O carburetors these were uh, flow jets they came out with three different type of flow jets. Uh, the flow jet one, the two, and then the crossover flow jet. And you can see right here, let me zoom down and you could pause it and read it if you cared enough about it. But there you go. This is a breakdown uh, of the parts that are inside this one piece carburetor, as well as the the name of them as well so I guess you could refer to it 
from that. So, now we're going to start cleaning this guy and putting it back together. Hey guys, there we go. That is the flow jet. And this is the high speed jet that goes inside this carburetor. Goes down into the top here. It's got a flat head. That's how you take it out. I have already cleaned it out, but I wanted to show you how I clean them out. This is a needle cleaner, a needle cleaner for a spray gun. And this is what I use. I put it in here and spin it around, clean all these little side holes out. Don't force it in and make it any larger. You just want to clean it out. Then you're going to blow it all out with compressed air. Just like that. You're not going to make the holes any larger. Just going to do that. Everything is all cleaned, nice, and ready to go. This guy's going to go down in the top here. And you go find the sweet spot. And we'll get it in there. More to come in just a second, okay, guys. guys. Had to get a screwdriver. It's going to be a slotted. We're going to tighten it up. Don't go crazy because we're dealing with brass and aluminum. There we go. That one is in and squared away. Now this one had seized up. I was not able to get it out. So what I did, I cleaned it, flushed it, put it in my ultrasonic uh, cleaner, cleaned everything out, blew it out with an air gun. This is where the needle valve is going to sit uh, and the float's going to sit on the bottom of it. And we're going to get to that in just a second. More to guys now. This is the fuel inlet. Fuel line connects to it. And this guy actually has its own cutoff switch, which I thought was kind of neat. I put a little Teflon on there to uh, make sure it doesn't leak. Some people say it's not good to do that. I've been doing it for years. And you see, that cuts the fuel on and off. So, that's it. And we're going to start putting this guy on. Let's see. This is the uh, low idle adjusting screw. Got it right here. Cleaned out. I have cleaned everything out. And what I also do, clean them out. You can use these and you say, oh yeah, that's great, but I don't have these. Uh, go to the grocery store and get a bag of pipe cleaners, like 50 of them for a dollar, and use them. And that way, when they get nasty, throw them away. I use them a lot too. Now, we're going to tighten this guy up. And we're going to get it set at a cranking position. It's a half turn, one turn, one and a half turns. That one is set. More okay count. guys, this is the float and the needle valve. I always say these things are just like commodes. Uh, this is just like uh, the flush valve uh, in your toilet tank. Uh, the exact same thing. Find some liquid. Uh, when you're getting ready to clean this guy, drop it in and let it sit. Uh, if it sinks, you know you got a leak. Uh, there's a hole in the solder. These are copper uh, and they're soldered in place. So uh, if it leaks, I don't know if you could try to solder it. Never done it. Now, I'm going to take this guy. Set it on just like that. And then we're going to put the pin in. That's going to hinge it into place. Let me grab a pair of pliers. More to come. Okay, guys. Got it in place. And there it sets. Now, one thing I did want to show you. Let me grab the reference manual. Uh, this is from another uh, repair manual and what it recommends because this helps when these things need to be adjusted and they flood. 
Briggs and Stratton from this year uh, repair manual recommends having the float level to the surface of the carburetor mind you this is upside down to the surface of the carburetor with 130 seconds allowance uh, for being off so you have 130 seconds allowed for play so you would make sure that this guy is level they actually make a tool for that Briggs and Stratton does uh, Briggs or Walboro Walboro makes one so and that should be pretty good kind of a rule of thumb if it leaks flip it upside down and tweak it a little bit to where it doesn't leak more to come okay guys now we're putting a bowl on here the gasket is in place and it's in pretty good shape there is the aluminum gasket that came with this and this is the high speed idle adjustment and it also holds the carburetor bolt on we're going to tighten down the outside just with this wrench for the for now and then we're going to set this guy one and a half turns is what it says so it is tightened in all the way not hard just enough to where you feel it seat and half turn one turn one and a half turns guys this carburetor is set and finished to be put on a mower when you put it on there you're going to have to do a little bit of fine tuning adjustment also take the nasty greasy bolts that you unbolted it from the motor drop them in your degreaser to clean it off that's about it for that video I'm sorry it took me so long to get back to you for bid mowers um, I had a bunch going on I hope that helps you I hope that's the carburetor you're asking about I still got to do another carburetor uh, today and then I'm going to do some work on uh, Murray Gator if I get a chance we've got a bunch of kids in the house so I'm spending as much time as I can in the shop y'all gonna make some mayhem